I looked at over a thousand images shortlisted for the Astronomy Photography Year competition in the last eight years to see what gear is used by the best astrophotographers in the world. In this video, I'm going to focus specifically on dedicated astronomy cameras for deep sky imaging. If you want to take away the data in a PDF, there's a link below or else we'll get stuck right into it. So first of all, we're going to look at the brands and manufacturers of these cameras. You can see here, ZWO is by far the most successful maker of dedicated astronomy cameras in this competition. It's a long way ahead of really any other manufacturer. Some of these in this list are quite specialized makers of scientific cameras that are used for many purposes of which astrophotography is one some of them zwo player one tube deck are specifically retail level dedicated astrophotography cameras that you could buy off the shelf so moving on to the models used the top ones over the full eight years you can see number one here the zwo asi 2600 mm pro so you got four zwo models in there plus two others second is the 6200 mm pro which have confusingly similar names and they're both monochrome called dedicated astronomy cameras for deep sky the 6200 is higher res and more premium costs about twice as much the third zwo model the 1600 is discontinued and was actually superseded by the top model the 2600 pro so that further emphasizes it's a good model and lastly the 294 mm pro it's worth touching on the naming convention briefly for zwo cameras because it can be a bit confusing so obviously in every camera you have the same convention so zwo obviously company name ASI, just the model range of cameras, they've all got ASI. Then the number indicates either the resolution of the sensor or the sensor name. So the 2600mm Pro is a 26 megapixel resolution camera. The 294 is called the 294 because it uses the Sony IMX 294 sensor. MM means it's a monochrome, MC means it's a color camera. Pro means that it's cooled, which is what you want for deep sky imaging because it manages the temperature when taking long exposures, which is what you're going to be doing. And then GT and Mini indicate if there's a built-in filter wheel or if it's primarily a guide camera. Since half of that list of models we just looked at aren't available, it's the data going back eight years, I've pulled out here the most used cameras from just the last three years to get a more recent take on what's being used. So you can see here the same two ZWO models come up top, the 26mm Pro, the 6200mm Pro, plus again the 294mm Pro and then also the colour version of the 2600 at the bottom there. So three models are really coming up top, 2600, the 6200 and the 294. So we can compare these cameras. So they're all great cameras for deep sky imaging, we know that. The key differences are coming in the, the sensor format, so that affects the field of view with which you can image there's a resolution difference and there's obviously a price difference amongst a few other small differentials all three of these cameras were originally released in 2020 the 2600 mm pro and its sister the mc pro have just been recently re-released with slightly updated models in 2025 so how would you pick between the three of them so really it comes down to your budget the size of your telescope and your tolerance for complexity in your workflow because there's a difference there. So let's look at each of those three cameras in turn. We'll start with the 294 because it's the, the cheapest. So you'll have to check live prices. There's some links below, but generally it's just under one and a half thousand US dollars. This is the best option if budget is your primary concern. And maybe if you're upgrading from a DSLR or a small color camera, it makes a great step up. It has the lowest total cost. So not only is the camera cheaper, but the smaller sensor means it can work with cheaper filters. And obviously, even though it's cheaper than the other models we're going to look at it's getting great results you can see on some of the images i'm showing you can see from the data why would you want to be cautious about buying this camera the sensor format which is smaller gives you a narrower field of view which limits your capacity to capture large targets it is lower spec in terms of the resolution it's just under 12 megapixels whereas the, the 6200 we're going to look at is 61 megapixels, for instance. And the sensor also exhibits a, a light pattern called amp glow in the corners, which has to be calibrated out using dark frames. So this adds a mandatory step to your process. So this is the additional 
complexity of the workflow that I mentioned at the start. So then the next camera is the one that keeps coming up top, recently re-released in 2025. Why would you pick this? So obviously it's the top performer in all the data we've seen and you can see some of the images. It's, it's obviously can deliver. It's high spec. It's not as high in terms of resolution as the the next one, the 6200, but it's 26 megapixels. It's slightly more expensive than the one we looked at before. It generally retails for just under 2000 US dollars and you can check prices below, but it's good value for that price for what you're getting, especially compared to the next model we look at, which is about twice the price. And it has zero amp glow compared to the model we looked at before. So you don't have to add that extra step in your workflow. And it has an APS-C format sensor, which gives you a larger field of view compared to 294 which we looked at so you can capture larger targets any reason to be cautious about getting this camera over others with the larger resolution you are getting larger file sizes compared to the 294 so you're going to be dealing with 100 megabyte files and processing all those and it has the medium sensor size so we talked about it has a wider field of view than the 294 but it's not as wide as the 6200 which we're going to look at in a second which is full frame so lastly, we'll look at the 6200. So this is the most premium level camera on this list of three. So it is the highest spec. It has super high resolution. It has the widest field of view with a full frame sensor. It's obviously showing up really high in our list of results. And you can see some of the images throughout this video. The only reasons you'd want to be cautious on this file size. Again, it's going to be even bigger than the, the camera we looked at before, the 2600. And obviously it's the price. So it's retails at just under $4,000. So it's twice the price of the 2600, which is obviously delivering really well. So to bring all this together, how would you pick between those three ZWO models? Really, I would say you've got to factor in those three things I spoke about before I went through the cameras. So budget, the size of your telescope and, and your workflow, your tolerance for complexity. So the 294 would suit you if you have a medium or a small refractor and your, your budget limited, so it's the cheapest one. The 2600 mm Pro, if you have a, a medium or a large refractor or a, a schmidt cassegrain telescope or a Newtonian, you're ready for kind of that next step. The 2600 mm Pro offers the best performance to cost ratio, you could say. And then lastly, if you own a premium telescope, a large refractor, and you have the budget, then the 6200 mm Pro will give you the ultimate field of view, the highest spec at the highest cost. So I hope you found this analysis useful in terms of comparing cameras. You can go really deep in comparing all the specs, but I think looking at what people are using that actually delivers in 2025 is, is a really good way of looking at it. Of course, using a dedicated astronomy camera is not the only way to go about deep sky imaging. You can do it with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. At Skies and Scopes, we offer a course taught by the great Cayetana Saiz, a Spanish astrophotographer that does exactly this. It's using your camera, your lens, your regular photography gear, plus a star tracker, and you can get images like this. Link below if you're interested in that. If you want to take away some of this data and look at it in your own time, then there's a link below to an astrophotography cheat sheet, a gear cheat sheet. And then if you want to see more analysis like this, check out this video where I go through the same data set, but I look at cameras, telescopes, everything all in one for deep sky imaging.